Thanks so much. Um, my name is Josh Landy. I'm an internal medicine uh, specialist and a critical care medicine specialist in Canada. I'm also the co-founder of Figure One. And today I'm going to tell you a little bit about what that is and why I think uh, it's, uh, it's important. So this is what the platform looks like. It's a platform that's built for a mobile device that lets uh, healthcare professionals upload and share cases in this format. The mission of our company is to democratize all of medical knowledge. And what that means, functionally, is that we believe that no person who practices medicine or works in the field of medicine should be beyond the reach of the knowledge of medical specialists in the era, in the, in the era where we have smartphones, interconnected devices, and instant forms of communication. Why is knowledge sharing important? Because of cases like this. This is a young baby who was born with an unusual skin condition in one of the most uh, deprived environments uh, in the world. This is a young baby who was born in Haiti at a, at a nursing facility that had only one nurse working there and had no doctors working there and no specialists and no idea what to do when the baby was born and they weren't sure if it had a life-threatening condition, or if it was something totally benign, or if it was something in between, or if it needed special treatment. And so the nurse fortunately had our app and was able to upload an image of this baby and ask for help. And within a few short hours, pediatric subspecialists from all over the world and 16,000 healthcare professionals arrived at this case hundreds of them giving very specific feedback, voting each other's answers, commenting on what the differential could be. And in the end, a, a pediatrician from California indicated that this baby actually had a benign skin condition and could go home with her parents. It should ex and they should expect for this condition to clear up in a few short days. This is the power of democratizing medical knowledge, not just to Haiti, but to everywhere in the world. And it's the power of this democratization of medical knowledge that I'm here to talk to you about today. This is, my th this is essentially my thinking of how we are going to move healthcare forward by helping people gain the knowledge they need in the moment they need it. This is how we do it now. We're getting to a time where we are running out of room on somebody's belt to put any more pagers. But this is how I grew up in a medical system where if you needed to reach a specialist, you would call them on their pager, and they would find a phone, and they would call you back. And this still exists today. I, I have a pager at the, at the hospital that I work at. But obviously, we should be leaving this behind. We're using cell phones now. And most people who are using them in their daily practice know that they are trying to use the same techniques and the same, um, the same behaviors that they use in the rest of their life to, mu to communicate within their professional realm. It's been 10 years now since the iPhone came out. And in that time, we've seen the rise of all sorts of social behaviors. People now have the, this incredible efficiency to be able to reach uh, anyone at any time with any content, no matter how important or insignificant. And what we've learned is that we can send that information and expect a response. And I feel like this is the sort of behavior we want people to be doing within medicine. You want to save somebody's life right now? Do it. The hard part is that um, we're not all connected. And that essentially is the mission of figure one, to be able to take um, healthcare professionals, specialists from around the world, and be able to answer each other's questions ask each other questions, and engage in conversation on any individual modicum of knowledge within the medical field. The idea that medicine as a whole is comprised of this giant corpus is uh, generally how we feel. It's overwhelming to think about all the different pieces of information we need to possess and understand um, and operationalize all at one time. But if you think about what the individual, the atomic unit of, a medi of medical education is, to me, it's an individual case. It's, it's a single moment in surgery. It is a single um, um, rash or 
ECG finding or um, laboratory test or unusual historical fact in a patient's history that you need to be able to parse, understand, and integrate. And being able to unify all of these pieces of information and having, the, having people to coach you from around the world um, has made a tremendous difference to many, many, many students already. The way that we take this idea in education and plant it firmly in clinical practice is, I think, an important factor in the way that we integrate education into practice. Um, it's my personal opinion that everything that we do as clinicians should function as an, as a, as an educational unit, right? Every bit of uh, clinical practice that you do is a moment to reflect on how you do it, whether or not you uh, made the right connection at the right time, if there's additional information you need to know, what can you do? And we need to turn these individual moments into a unified, continuous implementation of education that um, essentially is pervasive through our practice. Turning this into uh, how it faces patients and how this helps people, right now, if you are a patient and you enter a healthcare system, You'll see uh, a number of specialists, if you come to them with a new uh, symptom, they will try to find what the correct specialist is, and if you are lucky, that will happen on the first try. This is the best case scenario right now. Sometimes, that individual specialist may not know exactly what it is that they need to know in that moment. And this essentially is the existential dread of medicine, being able to be there next to a patient who is ailing and you are there to help them, and yet, you're not sure what it is they have. You're not sure how to treat it. You don't know what the right dose is. You don't know this medication. And this is happening in many places around the world. We've got a number of physicians who um, work with uh, Médecins Sans Frontières. And the experience they've had in coming, for example, from Canada to help in northern Lebanon in Syrian refugee camps is that they're seeing diseases that they don't know how to recognize. They're seeing diseases they don't know how to treat because in Canada, these diseases haven't been present, either they're not endemic and haven't been present naturally, or we're fortunate enough to live in circumstances where people don't have the types of socioeconomic vulnerabilities. The way that we transform this is by making the correct specialist not just a single person, but a lot of people. In the time that it takes that patient's case to be presented to a single specialist in real life, on figure one, you can see 50,000 people because one of these people is going to be able to answer your question and thousands more are going to be able to point out the risks and benefits and vulnerabilities of that patient's case. Say a patient wanders into a medical clinic complaining of chest pain, a community health worker can conduct an ECG and write a short history of that patient. And that history can be presented to 50,000 people who can all give you a 360 degree view of that patient's care, what it looks like from a pharmacist perspective, a physiotherapist, a rehab nurse. If that patient's having chest pain, you probably want a cardiologist and a cardiac surgeon and a cardiac rehab nurse, maybe a paramedic or an emergency doctor. And this is changing the scale that we can educate people. I think this is the validation that we've got, that, we, that we've received from the population of students and others who are using figure one. Uh, right now, uh, over 70% of United States medical students are using the platform. And they're using it to be able to communicate with each other in ways that they're already doing. We built this behavior on the back of the existing behaviors because we know that people are already transmitting images from person to person. When I was, um, when I was studying and researching at Stanford, what I was learning was how young physicians are using their mobile in healthcare. And the number one behavior they were doing is sending each other cases. We asked them what behaviors they were doing by sending each other cases. They were, doing, they, they were saying that they would uh, consult a colleague by sending them a case on their phone. They would do medical research by referring cases by using their phone. They would um, ask questions and test each other by sending cases on their phone. And there wasn't a safe way to do that by protecting patient privacy and by saving these amazing educational opportunities as individual cases that could be consumed, learned, indexed, searched, and discovered by millions of people. I had the good fortune of uh, presenting rounds um, yesterday at uh, Beijing's United Family Hospital. And 
That was an incredible experience, and the audience there was as large as one as I have ever presented in front of, about 150 people. That's about as many people you'd be lucky to get if you present grand rounds at most hospitals that I've been in. On figure one, when you do grand rounds, you get 100,000 people. And what that means is there is a thousand-fold difference in the way that medical education can be delivered in person and the way that it can be delivered at this type of scale. So this is the type of grand rounds that we're doing on figure one where we find interesting people who are doing unique research or unique clinical things and being able to put them in front of the audience and say, this is the way this particular type of investigation can be conducted. This is the way these types of patients uh, can be understood. And in fact, we've had moments where a specialist about a unique pediatric disease, the top person in the world, is, be, is now able to educate hundreds of thousands of people simultaneously about how to recognize a unique condition, refer it to the right pediatric subspecialist, and avoid the five or six times that these kids are bounced around from specialist to specialist without a diagnosis and without treatment. Healthcare has not been really great at picking up new technologies and new efforts. This is, not, this is not one of the strengths because healthcare systems are built to avoid risk, and that's natural. But individual clinicians and individual students, nurses, and other allied health professions can pick this up, can download it for free, and start using it immediately, and be able to reach individual specialists around the world and learn from them and start practicing with the new knowledge that they've gained in that moment. This gives us the opportunity to rethink the way medicine is delivered and the way education is delivered around the world. Right now, we're, investiga we're, we're investiga investigating and developing a way for healthcare professionals in North America who want to give to the health system and help their international colleagues be able to take the knowledge that they have at um, the traditionally siloed blue chip uh, academic institutions and deliver that knowledge and that training and those experiences to their colleagues around the world in international settings. Um, I don't think I, I need to um, hammer down the, the, the point that's been made in nearly every presentation today, but there are so, so many places where we couldn't possibly deliver the number of clinics and the number of hospitals that need to exist. I'm, I'm aware of individual companies who are planning to build five, 10,000 clinics, hundreds or even thousands of hospitals across China and other places in the world. And we just don't have the resources to be able to staff those clinics with people who are fully trained at the outset. But by being able to give um, the knowledge and the experience to the people who can use it most in those moments, we can do more with fewer people. And that is all. And I thank you for your attention. <laughs>